Chapter 6, Joey Becomes a Man. Nothing much changed during the next couple days. First graders called fourth graders rats. Fourth graders bared their front teeth and snarled. First graders ran away squealing. I kept opening doors for Judy Billings. Judy Billings kept ignoring me. By the second week of school, the first graders were tired of the game, and without the first graders calling them rats, the fourth graders pretty much forgot that's what they were. Except Joey Peterson. Joey was just doing what he'd said, taking care of number one. I don't mean he went around kicking people in the kneecaps. I mean, he did things pretty much his own way. He didn't care what anyone else thought. One day in class, we had pretend elections to learn how government works. Joey nominated himself for President of the United States. Then he voted for himself. He even looked different. He got his hair cut practically down to the nubs. Like Marine Boot Camp, he said. And he started wearing one of his father's old sweatbands around his head. He got a black marker and wrote number one on it. Joey was on his way to becoming a man. In fact, I think I saw him become a man before my very eyes. On a Thursday at the schoolyard. It was after lunch. We were just cruising around when a bee started flying near us. I hate bees, as much as I hate spiders. So I took off, flapping my hands. I heard Joey call, Suds, look! I turned, what? Look! He was holding out his arm. I couldn't see anything. Look at what? He was keeping very still, staring at his arm. Come closer. I came closer, and I saw. The bee was on his arm, crawling up and down. Gave me the shakes just to watch. Swat him, I whispered. He just kept staring at the bee. By now, other kids were coming over, gawking. One of them was Gerald Willis, the school thug. When Willis saw what was happening, he snuck up behind Joey and knocked Joey's arm from underneath. Joey's arm jerked up and the bee took off. But not for long. The bee made a U-turn and came right back and zap, stung Joey right on his arm. Kids shrieked. I think a couple of little ones fainted. Everybody rushed forward. A bee sting! Next to a car door slamming on your hand, probably the most painful thing in the world. Major agony. I tunneled through the mob. Would Joey be in convulsions? Conscious? Alive? He was grinning. He was staring at the little white bee sting bump on his arm, and he was grinning. He was a rat. He was a man. Girls swarmed over him. Ooh, Joey, it must hurt so bad. How can you stand it? Ooh, Joey, don't you want to cry? Ooh, Joey, you're so brave. Ooh, Joey. One of the girls was Judy Billings. Judy Billings followed Joey around the rest of the day like a puppy dog. I walked home with him, but so did she, and it was like I wasn't even there. Joey, can I see it? For the millionth time. Ooh, it gives me the shivers. It's not even visible. Weren't you scared? I heard people can die from bee stings. Hey, look at me. I'm the one dying around here. You think we ought to go to the emergency ward? Barf. Can I see it one more time? Scream. Of course, she couldn't just look at it with her eyes. She had to look at it with her hands, too. I guess she had little eyeballs in her fingertips. First, she would touch the invisible sting spot and say, does that hurt? And Joey would say no. And then she would press it and go, does that hurt? And Joey would look all cool and say, nah. Of course, that wasn't enough for her. She had to start feeling around the rest of his arm, too, to see if it was swelling up. She said it was. He said it wasn't. So, of course, she had to switch over to his other arm and go feeling around that one, too, to see how it compared. And all of a sudden, it wasn't about a bee sting anymore. Wow, your muscles are so hard. She didn't even see him clenching his arm. Girls are so dumb about that. Do you lift weights? She cooed. I lift my father's barbells, I said, crossing my fingers. She gave him a look like, did you hear a voice? Is somebody else here? As for Joey himself, he was a little hard to figure. I had to admit, he wasn't exactly sucking up to her. He was letting her do all the talking. In fact, for a minute there, it even looked like he was trying to help me. He gave me a little jab and said to her, Hey, I happen to know another guy that has pretty good muscles, too. Not as good as yours, she cooed. Oh, yeah, he said. Even better than mine. And you know what? I think he likes you. Her eyes widened. Really? Yeah, really. And I bet you'd like him, too. Maybe I would. She was blushing. I was blushing. 
Things were looking up. I was feeling good. Joey shot me a quick grin. Want me to tell you who it is? My face was burning. Tell her. Don't tell her. Tell her. Don't tell her. She gave him a shy smile. You don't have to. I don't, he said. No. How's that? Because I already know who it is. I was ready to faint. I wanted to crawl under the nearest car. Joey poked me again. Yeah, who do you think it is? She giggled. She blushed even redder. She looked up and down the street. She cupped her hands and whispered it into his ear. When she pulled away, she giggled again. He just gawked at her. She whispered some more in his ear. Then she ran off, giggling down the street. We walked. Joey didn't say anything, so I did. Well? Well what? Well, who did she say? He shrugged. Oh, nothing. I grabbed his shirt and jerked him to a stop. Peterson, who did she say? He sniffed. He shrugged. He looked away. Me. You? Yeah, she thought I was making it up about somebody else liking her because I was afraid to say it was me. I let his shirt go. Oh, great. Good friend you are. He screeched. What could I do? I was trying to help you. Yeah, big help. I didn't hear you telling her she was wrong. I didn't hear you say you don't like her. I don't. You know it. You can have her all you want. Traitor, I said. Suds. Traitor. I went to the other side of the street. After a while, he called. Suds, it's Friday. Stay over my house tonight. Never, I said.